Hey guys, Bradley Williams. Uh, before I started Buckhaven Land Solutions, I know most of this channel is about uh, forestry and wildlife management type stuff, but uh, I am an avid saddle hunter, and I've seen a, a lot of guys on a lot of these saddle hunting forums make a, make a few mistakes with their gear uh, that could potentially uh, lead to uh, injury or even, um, you know, death. Definitely some life-altering consequences if things go wrong. Uh, so I wanted to make a short video addressing some of those safety concerns and some of those things to keep in mind while you're saddle hunting. Uh, before I started Buckhaven, I had 12 years in the fire service, and uh, part of that job was uh, actually dealing with ropes uh, for rescue situations, knowing how to set up, um, you know, basic rope rescue equipment. Um, so I do have some formal training in uh, ropes. I'm definitely no expert. I'm definitely no mountaineering expert or anything like that, but have had some formal training in ropes. Um, one thing that always blows my mind about saddle hunting is um, a lot of guys just go out and buy this equipment and they don't get any training or mentorship and they just go out and climb. Um, you know, if you wanted to get into rock climbing, you wouldn't just go to your local mountaineering store, uh, buy the equipment you need, then go out to Utah and start climbing rock faces. Um, you know, whether it's a 100 foot fall from a rock face or a 25 foot fall from a tree, you can end up just as dead. Um, so while I don't say that to scare anybody, I think it's really important when you get into saddle hunting, find a good mentor. You know, you don't necessarily have to have formal training, but find somebody with some experience in saddle hunting or some rope experience uh, and actually get some training on basic ropes and knots, basic uh, rope care, uh, how to actually use this equipment in a safe manner. But uh, to help you guys out with that a little bit, I made this short video just addressing a, a few safety issues uh, that I've seen and hopefully it answers some questions. All right, so I want to talk about how to actually uh, tie your prussic knot now and a little bit about carabiners. One thing you always want to make sure that you're using on any of this stuff is that you're utilizing climbing rated equipment. Um, climbing rated gear, no matter what style of carabiner, whether it's a locking, whether it's a screw locking gate or a twist lock gate or a spring gate, um, we'll have a kilonewton rating. Well, this one's painted. Any climbing rated gear on the uh, spine will have the kilonewton rating and it will have a, a major axis rating and a minor axis rating. So what this, what this is rating is this major axis up and down this way is rated to 27 kilonewtons and if we put a side load across this way it's only rated at 9 kilonewtons and so um, it's really important also when you're set up to make sure that your force is being pulled um, from these points along that major axis so where you know if you do have a fall or you know like we talked about before you shouldn't shock load but if you do have a shock load that it's going across that major axis instead of that uh, minor axis. Uh, but again, how to tie your, how to wrap your prussic, uh, take the knot, the double fisherman's knot or the sewn end in this hand and hold this side out with the other. Come around to your climbing rope and make three wraps back through this loop. So one, two, three. All right, and so now what we want to do is what's called dressing the knot. So if we left this just like this, you kind of end up with just a jumbled mess here, and it, it, it will hold, but it's not going to slide up and down as effectively, and it's not going to grab as quickly and have as much friction. So what you want to do is grab this bottom part, because you actually don't want to put your carabiner around this knot. You want it to be around the rope, so we need a little bit of slack. But what we want to do is pull the part that is going to be forming this part of the loop down to the bottom, same on the top, and the part that's going to be forming where your carabiner goes, it needs to be in the middle to the inside. 
So a dressed, properly dressed Prusik knot should look nice and clean like that with the middle loops forming your carabiner loop and the outer part forming the part that your carabiner loop goes through. And when you pull, you kind of want to adjust it around to where you can put your carabiner on there without putting it over the actual knot. Uh, the quickest and easiest way, no matter what kind of carabiner you're using, a spring gate, a twist lock gate, or a screw lock, um, put the gate facing away from you, hook it through your device, your Prusik, your, you know, whatever you're using, flip it over, and then that leaves a nice gate for you to be able to just press your bridge into. That way, if you don't do that, you know, a lot of times you end up, if you do it the opposite way, <coughs> that gate's on the bottom side and then you're trying to fumble around with it and just kind of gets caught on things so um, I've always found the easiest and quickest way to hook up is to go with the gate facing away from you and you can just pop right in and if you've got a screw style you just go ahead and tighten it up um, that's another thing to pay attention to is if you've got a screw style like this always make sure that it is locked properly because that rating we talked about in the kilonewtons is actually less when not properly locked. If that gate is open, you lose a lot of that weight rating. Um, a typical fall in a climbing situation can produce up to five kilonewtons. Um, do your own research on this, but I believe for it to be climbing rated, it needs to be at least 20 kilonewtons along the major axis. Um, so that's one thing you definitely need to be checking for in any of your equipment you know don't don't buy cheap climbing equipment it's it's and if you don't know if it's rated or not it just spend the money um, it could save your life Okay, so one thing that I hear everybody talking about in the saddle hunting world is the, uh, the Madrock Safeguard versus the Madrock Lifeguard. So this is a Madrock Lifeguard. The Safeguard is the black one. Um, and it doesn't have the spring that allows this to feed like so easily like that. Um, and that's what could potentially make this dangerous for a saddle hunting application is this is actually designed to be used as a belay device um, when you're on the ground belaying somebody else um, which is why it's not quite as a big deal from the ground if it if it slides and allows you to feed rope because you've got to feed that rope to allow that climber you're belaying to go up um, so with that being able to slide freely so easily like that, you know, if it doesn't catch. Now it is designed to catch when a load is applied, but if that doesn't happen, you think, well, if it, if it fails or if it doesn't catch when it's supposed to, you're just gonna go straight to the ground. Um, so that's why I'm gonna kinda go counteractive to conventional wisdom out there. That's why I think the, uh, the lifeguard is perfectly safe to use, the red one, as long as you back it up with a Prusik. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. Um, you know, if, when this has weight on it, I mean, that Prusik is not doing anything, and this is perfectly safe, it's holding me. Um, but if this were to fail and slip, if I don't have a Prusik there, I'm going to the ground. But by having that Prusik knot above my, uh, my belay device, it acts as a double layer of protection there to where I'm not going to go to the ground even if this does slip free. Um, and you can also set this up for climbing. You know, if you leave your Prusik not too loose, but kind of loose, where you can slide it as you're climbing, you know, one sticking or whatever your climbing method is, like I said, we talked about before, you don't want to have slack in this. Um, if I were actually at height, I would have my lineman's belt on when I had this much slack and have that lineman's belt tight to prevent shock loading. Um, but anyway, when you take the slack out, it's still one-handed operation, and then you've still got that Prusik up there to catch 
in the event that you have a failure of your mechanical device. You're still not going anywhere. Um, one thing I guess we should talk about is repelling. When you've got that prusik and you're ready to come down, all you've got to do is just make sure there's no tension on this prusik. Unlock the prusik from your bridge. Make sure you've got good tension on this so you're not sliding down. Just unwrap your prusik knot. Store this wherever you like to store it. And you're ready to repel to the ground. Okay, so that part we just showed you was using your uh, your Mad Rock as a uh, basically as an ascender, and just how to be more safe with it, backing it up with the uh, with the Prusik, and you can do the very very similar thing with your uh, Ropeman. Um, your Ropeman is is an ascender. It's designed to capture progress as you climb up a rope, or actually be what's what's holding you on that rope, using it in a pair. To climb up the rope um, and so this is designed to have tension on it pretty much at all times it's not designed to take a shock load and stop a falling weight um, when they're slack in the line that's what causes these teeth in here to cut into the rope and potentially cause a rope failure under shock load um, so how you prevent that Talk about that here in just a second. One way to make these more safe is by backing it up with a prusik. And again, making sure that you never have too much slack in your line. So, If you just have this ropeman on here by itself, you get a lot of slack in this line and you fall, again, you're taking all of that, uh, that energy that's being built up not only by your body weight but the speed of your fall. And when it catches, you're putting all that energy into this, into this metal and into these teeth that are biting into this rope. That's not how this device is designed to work. This device is supposed to have weight on it the entire time and not be placed under a shock load. Um, one thing you can do, again, if you're climbing, single sticking, or even once you get up to hunting height, is back up this ropeman with a prusik. Have a mechanical and a friction uh, device in here to stop your fall. So as you climb, the the ropeman will actually tend this prusik and move it up the line for you so you can still have one-handed operation. So as you climb, take your slack out. And uh, if this fails, again, we're going to demonstrate that. I'm actually just going to pull this. Hopefully I can, I don't know if I can get enough load off of it. Make it come loose, but take a little bit off. Pull it free. That prusik is going to capture me from falling even if we have a complete failure from the ropeman. <clears throat> um, again, when you're one sticking, when you're ready to move your, your tether up further, always clip in with your lineman's belt. That way you've got something under tension that's holding you to the tree. So if you fall, you're not creating a shock load on the system. Um, personally, this is how I like to climb when I'm single sticking. I use the ropeman and a prusik, and then I actually hunt from this at hunting height just because it's easier to adjust than the mad rock. And then I swap over to the mad rock just to uh, repel, belay myself down uh, once the hunt is over. Um, 
but one of the biggest safety things is just always keeping something that's holding you under tension throughout the entire climb. Don't ever let this this rope, your your primary line, have slack in it without backing it up with something that's under tension. Because again, those falls and those shock loads are what cause these things to fail. Um, anytime you're using a mad rock, I would recommend backing it up with the Prusik. It, it doesn't cause any extra um, difficulty in use. It's still a one-handed operation if you set it up loosely and you've got that additional safety factor in there for if you do have a fall. Um, so <clears throat> um, again, I just when I'm we'll pretend that I'm actually at hunting height here, and uh, really I want my tether a little bit higher, but we'll pretend that I'm on my platform right here. Um, what I do is I keep this prusik up above. Still fairly loose, but up above the ropeman where it's still in contact with my bridge. So if this ropeman fails, that catches me pretty much immediately and I don't go anywhere. Um, if I need to adjust my position on the tether, again, I can pull up and stand up further. Or if I need to come down, all you got to do is just grab this pinch, the top of the prusik at the same time. And you can slide down as far as you need to slide until you let go. Um, thing to remember with that is, is letting go. Um, if you do start to fall, you know, don't just hold on to this because you'll go to the ground. You just got to let go to stop yourself. 